Hey y'all, welcome back to another video. Today we're talking about Dehancer. So if you haven't heard of Dehancer, I'm sure a lot of you have. It is a color grading plugin for DaVinci, Premiere, maybe After Effects too, uh, but I use it in DaVinci Resolve. But about a month ago, I was trying to color grade our last call baking spec piece that we did. And the inspo that we pulled from for this piece was shot on Kodak Vision 3 500T. This is the piece here. It's freaking beautiful. It's literally shot on 16 millimeter film and then graded in post by a pro colorist. But my hope was to be able to replicate this as much as I could from the Red Komodo 6K footage. So I grabbed a couple of these stills, dropped it into DaVinci and spent some time just trying to color match with my scopes, with my eyes. And I did get to a place that I was feeling okay with. But looking at it, I was one wondering like, oh, if I had a good film print emulation of that film, would it help? Would it look better? So it popped up in my email and I was like, hey, I would love to do some Dehancer stuff. And they were great. They got back to me. And here we are now. So in this video, I'm going to take you through what I did to match this look and match this film emulation and just kind of talk about Dehancer in general. So this video isn't going to be a full rundown tutorial on Dehancer. It is a lot more how I'm going to actually practically be using it, maybe to get looks that I couldn't normally get or wouldn't normally push myself towards. Last thing before we get started, this isn't technically a sponsored video. Dehancer didn't just ask me to say a bunch of good things about them. They actually asked me to truly review the product and kind of give my actual thoughts on it. But they did give me a promo code to share with y'all. So if at the end of the video, you're like, oh, maybe I will pick up Dehancer. You can click the link in the bio and use code DUSTINH at checkout for 10% off. That is so fun to say. I haven't done a lot of these. That's fun. With all that said, let's get into DaVinci Resolve and I'm going to show you how I recreated this look using Dehancer. Let's do it. Okay, sweet. So I have my clip here. I'm just going to fiddle around and find my hero frame. So this will be our hero frame and then I'm going to come over to gallery. I've already dropped in my stills for my inspo. So select this still and this is our goal right here. Of course, all footage is different. This footage is shot in different light, kind of brighter light. So I'm not expecting it to look absolutely perfect. So I'm just gonna make a couple nodes. And then I'm gonna go over to effects, scroll all the way down and drag Dehancer Pro onto my fifth node. The reason I'm putting it on the fifth node is I'm gonna be doing my color space transform, my conversion from log in Dehancer. So I want that to be kind of down the line so that I can still use these nodes to make just other adjustments that I would normally make. So I'll go ahead and label these. This will be noise reduction. This is going to be exposure. This will be balance. balance. Look grade. I'm going to make two more and we'll come back to those later. So I'm going to go ahead and kill our still just so we can look at it. This is one of my quirks that I don't really love about Dehancer. When you put it on, it has a bunch of stuff turned on and all the menus are open. I did see this one cool thing where a guy was like, oh, if you hold the option and click any of these drop down menus, they all close. So that's super nice. The main one that bothers me is the film grain because it kind of slows down my computer. So I'm going to go and turn that off and then we'll come up to input and do our transform. I have watched videos where people prefer to do a color space transform and then feed Dehancer a Rec 709 image. But as I was kind of testing it out, I think I like just doing the conversion in Dehancer better. Maybe I'll change my mind down the line, but overall, I don't think it's that deep either way. But I'm gonna come up to choose camera, shot this on the red Komodo, and yep, log 3G10. So we've converted our image, and the next thing I wanna do is come down to film. This is a really cool part. Look at all these film print emulations. Disclaimer, I'm not a well-educated film person and most if not all of the controls in Dehancer are built to be traditional film controls. So they'll be like, yeah, you can push your film and you can pull your film and you got color head and you can change your tonal range. I don't know what all that means from like a film perspective. So if you also don't, don't worry about it. As with any tool, just spending time playing with it and dragging things from left to right pretty much helps you get a grasp on it. <laughs> with that said, we'll come to our film, select Kodak Vision 3 500T, because that is what our inspo is. Okay, sweet. Now that we've selected our film, my next thing I like to do is come down to print, mainly because whatever print profile you choose is gonna affect your image a lot. 
So I don't wanna make adjustments and then have to remake them. If we look at this drop down menu, you'll see the classic Kodak 2383 print film. This film print is used a ton in Hollywood movies, even now films like The Batman and I think Dune will shoot digitally, print the footage onto Kodak 2383 film and then scan it back in. Don't quote me on that process, but I will say that's not the look we're going for in this image. That's not the look that our inspo really kind of promotes. This look is very like color dense and very vibrant and very nice, but there's something that separates it from the Kodak 2383 looks. For this piece, I really like the Kodak glossy paper, so we'll select that. And then I'm gonna come down here and click on the analog range limiter. Uh, based on the name, I'm gonna assume that it limits the range of our luminance and maybe even our colors to something that could be shot on film or developed on film. I'm gonna keep it on for now. Maybe I'll turn it off because it is kind of washing out our image over here, as you can see. Not a lot of contrast, not a lot of color density in our image right now. So I'm gonna drag our color density literally all the way up. I love what it's doing to the flowers here. Like, check that out. So next thing, I'm gonna come up to my expand, enable that, and set our black and white point. This is gonna do a ton to dial in the contrast of the image. And I'm literally just gonna match my white point to the white point of our inspo on the scopes. And same for our black point. So I turn that on and off. I mean, we're coming so far right now. Next, I'll jump up to film compression. And what I can tell this is doing is it's taking our whites and really softening them out and compressing them. Similar to what would happen if you came over to your tone curve and drug down the top. You know. Anyway, flicking that on and off. I like what it's doing, but I do feel like it's taking a lot of punch out of our image. So I'm just gonna try to dial in that white point where I want it to be. I'm mainly looking at their skin tones and this kind of hot spot or hotter spot over here. I really feel like it's still doing too much. The cool thing is most of the parameters on Dehancer have an impact slider, which is basically like a global adjustment. So I can come in here and raise it up if I want more or take it all the way down and it's basically like it being turned off. But I think that's done just enough. We still have kind of some bright highlights in their skin tones. This spot is a little bit more managed and we're not losing too much punchiness. Right above that, we have our film developer tab. Maybe I'll jump over to my vector scope and mess with this color boost a little bit, but I really don't think much needs to happen here. Dope. So next I'm going to come over to color head and this one is pretty powerful and it is very much in that same realm of making broad strokes and broad adjustments to make sure that we can keep our entire piece and our entire video pretty consistent. Pushing and pulling these colors in and out of the image and a broad way I feel like will help us get to this look a little bit more and kind of stay more true to that Kodak Vision uh, 500T film emulation. Before I do jump over to my look grade and start really dialing in colors and specific changes. One thing I do love is selecting gang and that makes it where they all move together at the same time. Again, very much in the spirit of broad strokes and keeping things normalized. So I'm just gonna start dragging this around. I am gonna jump back over to my vector scope so I can see the data for our reference image and our actual image and try to get those as close as they can be. So you can see as I pull to the right, our data for our actual image is pulling away from the reference image, but if I go back to the left, we're getting a little bit more similar, also using my actual eyeballs. And the big thing I'm looking for here, and really the rest of the time that we're doing this, besides the film grain, are these deep red shadows, especially around the skin tones, and these kind of teal, blue, cyan highlights in the skin tones especially. So you can see, we really do have that already here, our shadows, a lot of them are more orangey than they are red, but one thing I do think that could be causing that is this orange wood table that is literally bouncing all of the light in the room back up onto their skin tone, so it's gonna be orange. There's no orange bounce really in this image, so it makes more sense that it would be pinker, kind of more skin tone color, but I do think we can dial that in. With that said, dialing that in with something like a hue versus hue slider is also gonna pull the table because that's where the color and the light is coming from. So that is just gonna have to be a decision that we make once we get there. Do we wanna pull a key? No, we don't wanna pull a key. I don't wanna pull a key on every single image, so we're not gonna pull a key. <laughs> but yeah, I do think that is 
a pretty good spot to be. The greenish teal in the skin tones is really getting close. Ours are almost looking blue now, whereas these look a lot more green. So I'm gonna dial that in a little bit. I might break these and push towards green a little bit. It's doing so much. I think that's a really good spot to kind of call it a pause with Dehancer and jump over to my normal tools that I would use in DaVinci. I'm much more comfortable with using things like the primaries and the log wheels to dial in a look than I am with Dehancer. So like I said earlier, this is a tool. I don't feel like we have to use every single one of these options and only these options for it to be worth using Dehancer. Literally just the film emulation and the print and the color head and little things like that have gotten us so far. I mean, check this out. So I made a color space transform to take our red log into Rec 709. So this would basically be our starting point. This is just the conversion by itself. And then this is where Dehancer has gotten us. I think that's a pretty freaking long way. Like that is pretty dang close. But like I was saying, now I wanna jump over to my normal nodes that I would be using with my normal tools and finish dialing in this look. So first I'll do some exposure adjustments. Next, just a little bit of saturation and color boost adjustment. And then this is where a lot of the heavy lifting again to get those more red shadows. Overall, just kind of like a pinker tone and more of that teal and green in the highlights and skin tones, which I really do think we already have here. So it really is just getting the image from kind of this orangey world to this more pinky world. And now for a few kind of heavier adjustments, I'm gonna push my lift a little bit towards the pink, my gamma a little bit the opposite way. Take my temperature and cool it off a little bit. And then again, try to bring more pink into the image. So I'm just gonna shift my tint towards the right. And that did a lot, honestly. Jump over to my log wheels, push more of that like pink and red into the shadows. And then mid tones, kind of those skin tones the other way towards these like cyan and greens. Probably lose some of that pink in the shadows, honestly. And then pull them down just a little bit. And then I know I mentioned not making specific hue versus hue adjustments, but I am gonna make one. I'm gonna come in and kind of grab these orangey shadows, but I'm gonna spread it out, click my red so that it's a little bit more spread out. And click my yellow so it's more spread out and then just start dragging these up just a little bit to see if we can get closer to those pinks. I feel like we could go back to our lift or our uh, log wheels and take some of that pink out because now there's like a lot. And then maybe bring the gamma down just a, just a smidgen. Yeah, that was it. Okay, so like I was saying earlier, there are tools in Dehancer, specifically film grain, halation, and bloom that I already have a pretty solid work for flow in DaVinci. So I'm honestly not gonna be using those. The bloom is pretty good, like just adding it on and increasing it and everything, but I just feel like the built-in DaVinci ones are better for me. I know how to use them. I've been using them for a long time. For film grain, the grain is really nice, and honestly, it might be better than the built-in DaVinci film grain, but one thing I do love about DaVinci's film grain is I can come drag it on and I know that this was shot on 16 millimeter and they have presets built in. So I'm gonna leave it on the 16 millimeter preset, turn up my grain strength a little bit. Let's kind of zoom in here. Now I'm not gonna match these perfectly cause this is like a JPEG image ripped from Instagram. So I'm not trying to get it to look that uh, munchy, <laughs> but I will just kind of dial in my grain strength a little bit. With the film grain, I'm thinking these are looking super similar. I don't think I wanna push it any more uh, towards pink, at least this, because again, we have the orange bouncing off the wood table, giving it that kind of orangey feel, and maybe that's just where we let ours live. I might tweak it around a little bit more, push a little bit more green into the skin tones, because they're looking kind of blue and teal compared, but 
I think that's pretty dang close. I am gonna jump into Dehancer one more time and come down to my vignette. I do have a workflow for vignettes in DaVinci, but this is so quick to just like turn it on. Turn your feather all the way down if you wanna see like what exactly it's doing. And then just feather it back out. Just a slight one. Just a little baby vignette. Because it's raw footage, I'm gonna throw a little bit of noise reduction on it and a little bit of sharpening at the end to kind of counteract any softness that I get from that noise reduction. And last, last bit, I'm gonna come in, grab a glow node. And my glow process is super simple. You've probably seen people do this all over YouTube, but I just drag my shine threshold all the way down, change my composite type to soft light, and then just dial it in with the global blend. That looks so dope. <laughs> like I know it's a lot, but. So the glow is adding kind of an orangey hue over my image. So I'm just gonna come over here to saturation and pull that out of there, hopefully. Yeah, that's better. That way we get the glow, but it's more of like a white glow and not too much of a, that orangey hue that's already taking over our image. But I think that's looking really, really dope. So yeah, I hope that was helpful y'all. I hope just showing kind of how I'm gonna implement Dehancer into my workflow and use it in this broad strokes way, but still go back and do what I know how to do and use the tools that I'm comfortable with to get my image to a final place. I'm super excited to mess around with other film emulations. That's kind of a thing that I feel like is gonna help me not get stuck in one look because I've been stuck on the Kodak 2383 thing for so long. And I feel like just looking at other film print emulations and getting into different worlds is gonna really help me have more variety in my color. Uh, so if anything, I think Dehancer is worth it for the high quality film print emulations, but having all of the other tools and abilities and drop down menus in it makes it so dope. All right y'all, so one last thing before I go, I wanted to chat about the Dehancer iPhone and iPad app. This thing is sick. So since the iPhone 11, I'm very much a take some photos on your iPhone, put them in Lightroom Mobile, get a good preset, a good edit, something you've cooked up in the kitchen beforehand and just throw it on Instagram. I'm here for a good time, not a long time. And I feel like the Dehancer app fits really well into that box. Let me show you what I mean. So we have our photo in and then we just have to pick a film emulation and start editing. They have a ton of film emulations, basically all the same ones that they have in the DaVinci app, all made by super smart color scientists, color theorists, people that are way smarter than me. And it's pretty sick because as you can see, we have little display windows to see what they're gonna do to our photo. So I'm gonna stick with my Kodak Gold and this app does have all the other film style parameters and settings that you can change, but I'm really just gonna mess with the print, which is where you know we can select that Kodak 2383 print film I think it looks awesome we'll compare that to the glossy paper which kind of leaves that Kodak gold look intact but for this let's do something fun let's make it look cinematic mess with the exposure a little bit and here are the heavy hitters of this app so I love Halation I love Bloom I think they really make your footage or your photos stand out or look vintage or look retro and they're overall relatively easy things to just apply and give your photo or footage just a cool feeling a cool look even more than that this can do it on your phone like I can just snap a photo put a film emulation turn on Halation and Bloom and then put it on Instagram I love that like those are, that's the main reason that I would use this app so let's turn on Halation we can adjust the source, which is basically like your threshold in the Vinci, the amount, a bunch of different parameters. But like I said, I'm not really here to dial this all in. I'm just trying to post something on Instagram. So I'm going to turn it down a little bit to make sure it's not too crazy. And then same thing for the bloom. You can see those highlights at the top start blooming out when we turn that on, my skin tones. I'm going to turn that amplified down a little bit so it's not messing with my skin too much. I'm going to look around and find some kind of color boost. That's what I wanted. And let's do some film grain just for funsies. And now we can literally just export it to our phone, go post it on Instagram, and we're done. And I hear you, you may be asking, Dustin, this is a video color grading plugin. Does their app do video? Of course it does video. You already know it does video. So we can just go to our gallery, select our video. I shot a little Nike spec, and it already has all the settings turned on from the previous edit that we did, but 
Like I said, we can go look at films. I'm gonna pick one of the Vision 3. Let's do the 50D, dial in our exposure because that is pretty dang bright. And we have halation and bloom on these as well. I'm gonna keep the halation on and honestly turn it up a little bit more. And something really cool that you can do with video in the app is film breath and gate weave. So gate weave is essentially as film is being pulled through a projector, maybe it's not completely stabilized and it has like a little bit of shake to it. Think like super eight type of look. You can dial that in if you want to get that shakiness. And then film breath is, again, I'm not super smart as far as film goes, but basically if you're shooting video on film, you're shooting 24 different frames per second. All those frames might not be perfect. Maybe the film's expired. Maybe every fourth frame is a little bit weird. Film Breath is gonna give you those imperfections and similar to the idea of chromatic aberration or film grain or halation, it is an imperfection of the film process that maybe you like because we just all like that for some reason. Isn't that weird? So yeah, you can add those on, export your video, post it to Instagram and Bob's your uncle. Did you know that Bob's your uncle is a British slang term? But yeah, y'all, this app is really dope. Like I said, I'm definitely gonna be using it mainly to just put a film emulation on, halation, grain, bloom, post it to Instagram. But y'all, thank you so much for hanging out with me. We've reviewed multiple applications today. I hope this video wasn't too long and I hope that you got some value out of it, honestly. If you do wanna pick up Dehancer for your editing software of choice, I recommend it. I think it's dope. You can use my code DUSTINH at checkout. You'll get 10% off. I'll get 10% of whatever you do pay. It sounds like a win-win to me, but if not, don't worry about it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like down below. And guys, seriously, if you made it this far, this is a long video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next week.